In this tutorial, we're going to focus on how to automatically skin models interactively, to identify and group zone faces, and interactively select and group zones and zone faces. Groups are key to working with Itasca software, as these allow you to name model objects, for easy reference later. For example, when you want to assign properties to one part of the model, but not another, apply forces to the walls of a tunnel or a foundation, or assign boundary conditions. Recall that groups may also be associated with different slots, which provides a lot of flexibility for organizing the objects in your model. For example, a zone may be part of a collection of geotechnical rock units called granite, and also be part of a collection of zones within some future excavation called Cut 1. First, we've created a new project through the file menu called Model Pane Grouping. Next, we're going to import a model that was generated in Griddle, called Hilly Tunnel. We see that it's a FLAC 3D grid file. The grid file has now been imported, and we can see that a little over 100,000 zones were created, and that there are already 13 zone groups in this model. These were generated automatically by Griddle, based on watertight volumes. Let's look at the model by going to the plot view, and adding a zone plot item. We can see that the model is a hilly topography, with a tunnel going through it. Other than the surface, most of the model boundaries are orthogonal, with the exception of this curved surface here. We see that three of the 13 zone groups are visible. ZG, or zone group, 1, 2, and 3. Now, if we hide zone group 1, we can see that there are several other groups that were automatically assigned by Griddle. These tunnel groups represent excavations or construction sequences of the tunnel along its length. Okay, say we want to rename this material here and assign it to a different group. We can do this interactively in the model pane. By default, the active object is a zone, which is what we're interested in at this stage. However, you can see here there are several other objects that we can operate on, such as different structural elements and zone faces. Now, simply click on the zones that we want to rename and go over here to the Assign tool. There are a number of slots that have already been predefined. A default slot, and slot 1, which was also generated by Griddle. We can add a group name, and call it Rock. We now see that the color has changed. If you don't like the color, use the mouse right button to open a menu, and select, Change the default color. Down here in the color labels, we have the original griddle zone groups, but also a new rock group has been added to the default slot. We can reference this volume of zones by either group name, since they are in different slots, which provides a lot of flexibility. And, it's a little easier to remember that these zones are called rock, as opposed to zone group 001. Now, if we want to look at the tunnel zones within the model, we can simply use the hide by color tool and then click on the rock, to hide it. Note that these zones still exist, they have only been hidden. We can click the, show all, icon, to bring them back. Let's hide the zones once more, to proceed. Next, let's look at renaming some of the tunnel excavation cuts. Select the, hide by color, icon, and pick this first tunnel segment. Then, use the, assign a group, tool again, and add it to a new slot called, tunnel and name the new group, Cut 1. Let's repeat this for the next few cuts. As we're doing this, the colors are being regenerated. But again, we can go in and change the colors, if we so desire, to make them a little easier to see. Now, let's work with automatically identifying all the zone faces in the model. This is really useful, for combining various zone faces into a common group, making it easier to apply forces, or to apply boundary conditions,
to both regular and irregular surfaces. For example, if this was an underwater model, we would be able to easily apply a hydrostatic pressure to the entire surface by simply referencing the group name in an apply force command. This whole process of identifying all the surfaces is referred to as skinning the model. To do this, let's switch to the zone face objects. We can see there are three zone face groups that were generated automatically by Griddle. EF refers to external faces. Most of the tools that we're going to use, in terms of zone faces, are based on the concept of a break angle, set to 45 degrees, by default. The model surfaces are made up of zone faces, or facets. As we move from one facet to another, there's an angle between them. Even here, where the model is curved, there is still a relatively flat angle between the individual facets. In contrast, here we can clearly see two distinct surfaces of the overall model, demarked by a sharp 90 degree angle. As 90 degrees is greater than the current break angle of 45, and the angles between the facets within these major model surfaces are less than 45 degrees, the software can distinguish between them. On the surface topography, depending on the degree of curvature involved, you can use the same logic. For surfaces with a wide variation of curvatures, you may need to try to distinguish it from the other model surfaces, using different break angles to capture it all, or as a series of pieces, using a combination of break angles. Now, let's look inside the model, using this tool, which allows us to hide surfaces, based on a break angle. When we select it, and we click here, we hide the surface, and can see inside the model. Note, that there are still only three zone face surfaces. So, when the griddle model was exported, only external faces were included. However, in the model pane, we have a very handy tool that will automatically detect any internal or external faces. First, we need to go back to zone object view, and select this assigned tool. Look at the advanced settings and make sure that the also assign group names to faces inside the model option is checked. And make sure that the ignore existing group names is not checked. Let's keep the default break angle of 45 degrees. Any groups that are created are going to be assigned to a slot called skin by default. Let's click the button assign groups and very quickly we see we have created a number of zone face groups. Referring to the color labels we see that the topography was assigned the face group name, Rock Top, based on a combination of the zone group we created earlier in the tutorial, with the designation, Rock. The automated face group names are based on the object's compass orientation, Top, Bottom, North, South, West, and East. There is also Rock West, which is this entire area here. Since a break angle of 45 degrees was selected, these two model surfaces, have been identified as a single face group. If we want to break these out, we would need to adjust the break angle, while ensuring that this does not affect the identification of the other model surfaces. For a break angle of 45 degrees, when we click on this face, we see that the entire western model surface lights up. Now, let's just click off of that surface and change the break angle to 30 degrees, and try selecting the westerly surface again. You can see that now, the model pane distinguishes between the two westerly surfaces. Now, let's try to select the tunnel surface inside the model. Reset the break angle to 45 degrees, and hide the westerly face again, using the Hide by Break Angle tool, so we can see surfaces inside the model. Pick the Select by Break Angle tool again and click on the tunnel roof or walls. Let's add this selection, as a zone face group, called Tunnel. Now that we have done this, we can use the Tunnel group to create a shell, using the Create a 2D Structural Element tool, found here. In addition to a shell, 
a liner, or a geogrid may also be implemented. Let's find the tunnel group and click the Create button. A shell object has been added to the model. Now, let's switch back to the plot view and add a shell plot item. If we hide the zone face groups, plot item, we can better see the shell along the tunnel. This concludes our tutorial.